Welcome to English Lab. This presentation is about active and passive voice. Let's look at the basics. Sentences can be active or passive. Therefore, verb tenses also have active forms and passive forms. Let's look at some of the rules. Passive voice is used when the focus of the sentence is on the action. However, it is not important or not known who or what is performing the action. For example, my bag was stolen. In this example, the focus is on the fact that my bag was stolen. I do not know who did it. And it's also not very important. The important thing is that the bag was stolen. Another use of the passive is when it is appropriate to hide who or what performed the action, as the following example shows. A mistake was made. In this case, the focus is on the fact that a mistake was made. I do not blame anyone in particular. Or maybe I do blame somebody, but I don't want to say who it is. If I work for a big company, I know that my colleague or my employee has made a mistake, but I don't want to say their name. I just want to say a mistake was made. This is where the focus is, and this is passive. The passive is formed like this. We need a subject, then we need some form of the verb to be, and then we need a past participle. If we go back to our first example, my bag was stolen. My bag is the subject. Was is the past tense form of the verb to be. And stolen is the past participle of steal. So why do we use the passive voice in academic writing? Often in academic writing, we don't want to focus on who is doing an action, but on who or what is receiving or experiencing the action. This is often where our focus is. For example, here is an active sentence. Scientists classify humans as mammals. If we change this to the passive, it becomes humans are classified as mammals. Remember, we need the subject, which in our passive sentence becomes humans. We need the present tense form of the verb to be, and we need the past participle of classify, Humans are classified. This passive sentence focuses on how humans are classified rather than on who classifies humans. In this case, it's quite clear already that we are talking about scientists. So we take the focus off of the scientists and put it instead on the way the humans are classified. So that's one reason we use the passive voice in academic writing. Sometimes it is obvious, irrelevant, or repetitive to state who the doer of the sentence is. Use the passive voice as a way to avoid this. Here's another use, though. It is also a way that the use of informal personal pronouns can be avoided. For example, here is an active sentence. I will discuss theories of language learning in a section later in this chapter. Now, we know that it's generally not a good idea to use informal personal pronouns like I in academic writing. I need to get rid of this pronoun so I can transform this sentence into passive. Like this. Theories of language learning will be discussed in a section later in this chapter. So instead of saying I will discuss theories of language learning, that's active, theories of language learning will be discussed. Now I've got my subject, my be verb, and my past participle. It is obvious that it is the author of the article who will discuss the research. It is also important to avoid using I. On this slide, you will find a table that I have made for you with each of the most common verb tenses in English and then we have an example of what they look like in active voice and what the same sentence would look like in passive voice. For example, in our first tense, the simple present, we have an active sentence, people speak English here. And then we have what this sentence would look like in a passive form. 
English is spoken here. So that's how we can make the passive in the simple present. Take a few minutes to have a look at the rest of this table. That is the end of our active and passive voice presentation. Please return to English Lab for more presentations.